The COVID virus or Christ, which one is going to have a lasting impact in our life? Over the last little while, all of our lives here in North America have been challenged with the threat of the spread of the virus. And I've been asking myself as a Catholic, how should we respond to the challenge that is before us? And I've come to the conclusion that we can either let our faith be beat up, or we can allow our faith to grow up. We can allow us ourselves to be clubbed, or we can allow Christ to form us in the challenge that we find ourselves in right now. So I thought, let's go through some lessons that maybe would help us respond to this trial, to this challenge, because we can't change the fact that the virus is maybe knocking on our doorstep, but we can change how we respond to the circumstance. So that will be the focus over the next little while over the video videos that I'll be releasing. So here's lesson number one. What is it? Life is not about you. <laughs> it's also not about me. <laughs> what is life about? Life is about God. It's about doing his will. In fact, the pressing business of the Christian's life is what does God want? How does he want me to live? How does he want me to respond? How does he want me to think? Because doing the will of God, God glorifies him. And this is why we've been placed upon this earth, to glorify God. And this brings meaning and purpose to our life. Now, I know that you know this or you won't be watching the video, but let's just go through some basics here. Remember how Jesus taught his apostles to pray? He said, let thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He didn't tell the apostles, pray this way. My kingdom come, my will be done. Now I know my and thy rhyme, but they're two different words and they mean completely different things. Again, the pressing business of the Christian life is to do the Father's will. And this requires a faith life. But here's the thing, we fool ourselves into thinking this is what we're doing. We fool ourselves into thinking that we have a strong faith life. When in fact, our faith is actually very imperfect and we're very imperfectly conforming our will to the will of God and doing His will. How do we know this? Well, here's a very simple test. When the conveniences of life are taken away, our peace goes with them. So when the conveniences and comforts of life are taken away, we respond with anger and frustration and, and maybe fear or sadness. Why? Because our faith and our life is resting in the convenience and not in Christ. See, we're not made for convenience, we're made for Christ. We're not made for comfort, we're made for the glory of God. And so sometimes in the comfortable life of a first world country, we get blinded and we end up placing our hearts in the things of this world instead of God. And a way that we can test this is when our conveniences are threatened or taken away, it disturbs our interior peace. So if you find yourself responding and you're getting fearful and worried and anxious and maybe sad, that's just simply an indication that you have imperfect faith. <laughs> and guess what? Me too. We all do. It's a journey. You know, the, the spiritual writers talk about the importance of placing our confidence in Christ amidst the trials. For example, uh, St. Philip Neri, to preserve our cheerfulness amidst sickness and trouble is a sign of right and good spirit. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 31, therefore do not worry saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed your heavenly father knows that you need all these things, but strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. So again, we have Jesus reminding us, it's not about my kingdom, your kingdom, but thy kingdom, his will, not my will, but your, or your will, but his will. And so he says, strive first for the kingdom of God. And we find ourselves not doing that with imperfect faith. Now, what do we do? I would suggest three things. Number one, acknowledge that you got imperfect faith. That's the problem. In fact, in order to deal with any problem, you have to acknowledge that there is a problem. So that's the first thing we have to do. Hey, we got imperfect faith. God, please forgive me. Help. Second thing, number two, ask for the gift of faith. And how do you do that? You just simply ask, God, give me the gift of faith, the supernatural gift of faith. And number three, feed your faith 
starve your fear. And how do you feed your faith? You gotta pray. You gotta pray. The only way that faith is gonna grow is if we spend time with Jesus. So well, let's give some time to Jesus. Maybe you got some extra time now because maybe you're not going to work or your schedule's disrupted or extracurricular activities are not there anymore. See, so you find yourself with a little bit of spare time. Pray. The second thing, you gotta starve your fear. And how do you starve your fear? Stop reading all the headlines that are feeding into the fear on the internet on, or on TV. Now, if you find that the, the headlines aren't feeding your fear, then, then maybe that's not a problem. But if you find yourself getting worked up and that's where your mind is constantly going, then starve the fear by cutting it out, by stop reading all those headlines and then spending a little bit of more time in prayer. So. My friends, lesson number one, life is not about us, it's about God. And we have imperfect faith, so we feed it how? By going to God to pray, starving our fear, cutting out the negative headlines, and hopefully this is a little uh, encouragement to live the Catholic life. More lessons coming as we go through this trial. If you're interested, if you haven't, please subscribe and click that little bell to get notifications when we release our next video. Uh, my name is Ken Yuzinski from CatholicSpeaker.com. Thank you for watching.